Um, have you ever gotten lost in a tropical storm? Well, now you'll never have to because today we are going to be doing a complete tour of Disney's Typhoon Lagoon. Let's get going. Alrighty friends, today I am going to be showing you everything here in Disney's Typhoon Lagoon. So on your next trip to this water park, you're gonna be able to find everything you need from Dole Whip to delicious food to spot to relax and even all of the fun rides. Let's go. The first things first, we are going to head over here where we are going to tap in. If you don't have tickets, no worries. You can buy them right outside of the gate here. But luckily for me, I do have this ticket, so we're gonna head on it. All right, so first things first, when you get here into the entrance, the first guy you're going to see is right here, and that's the lagoon alligator at the front of the park. So the storyline here at Typhoon Lagoon is that there was a typhoon that absolutely wreaked havoc upon the formerly pristine tropical paradise that was once this park. Ships, fishing gear, and surfboards are just everywhere because that's where the storm threw them. This one's super fun, and frankly, I'm not much of a water park girl, but I really like it here. So once you pass Lagoon Alligator, you're going to head along these paths. I'm gonna take a little bit of a cut up this way, just to show you guys a good view, but you're gonna walk along these paths to head into the actual park. So if you head up this way that I did, you're gonna get a great view of Typhoon Tilly and the Wave Pool and kind of the overview of the park. It's really fun up here, and it's a great spot for pictures and just a little bit of sightseeing before you head into the park. So as you walk in, one of the absolute first things you're gonna hit is right here and it's to our left and it's the safe harbor. So this is where if your kiddos get lost, they are going to bring them right here. It's arguably one of the most important parts of the park. And while your kiddos spend some time over here, you know, waiting on you, they actually have some games, some music, lots of things to keep them entertained and pretty calm just in case they, you know, miss their families. So continuing into the park, right here to my left, you're going to find the attraction wait time board. So right here is the attraction wait time board. Uh, this is gonna be really helpful with guests for, with, uh, for wait times because there's not really an app the way that there is my Disney experience for this. So it's not always gonna be 100% accurate, but if you wanna kinda gauge what the parks look like that day and the crowd levels, this is gonna be a great place to start. Directly across from the wait time board is Singapore Sal's. This is gonna be the main merchandise and only merchandise location here at Typhoon Lagoon. You can also get your towel rentals here as well as like bathing suits, towels, whatever. So if you decide that you want to come to Typhoon Lagoon and you've already planned your trip and you don't really have a bathing suit or towels, you can buy them here if you want to or you can of course head to Disney Springs. One cool thing about this is that if you really love Typhoon Lagoon, they have merchandise. But even if you love um, Blizzard Beach, they have merchandise for that as well. Disney in the past few years does not keep the water parks open at the same time. And right now while I'm here, Typhoon Lagoon is open and Blizzard Beach is closed. To the right of Singapore South, they're gonna have locker renter rentals and restrooms. So you can use cash and credit only for these. Um, they range anywhere from 10 to $15, depending on what you get. And while we don't necessarily always use them, uh, we do think that they're a great addition to have if you are concerned about your items. Okay, so walking back towards the Typhoon Lagoon wait time board, uh, towards the wave pool, you're gonna find the mini donut stand. So this is a mini donut stand where you can buy delicious mini donuts with different dipping sauces for a small additional fee. And I cannot stress how much I love these. It is technically a Joffrey's run establishment. Uh, although they do not have the full Joffrey's coffee, coffee spread here, luckily there is a full Joffrey stand just a few steps away and I'll show that to you. But this is what you can grab here. And you can grab coffee and tea and hot chocolate and lemonade, uh, but not a full coffee bar. Then right next to the mini donut stand is just this little snack cart over here. You can grab some bottled beverages, some seasonal fruit, cheeses, popcorn, uh, just a few small items. So another thing right next to the snack stand is gonna be the Arctic Dots ice cream stand. This is really just a dip and dot stand, but it's tons of fun. You can get small, medium, or larges. They have lots of flavors like rainbow ice, chocolate chip cookies and cream, cool mint, cotton candy, and more. And again, I'm a big believer in ice cream. So the way that Typhoon Lagoon is set up is there's kind of like, it's like in a big circle and there's the inner circle and then there's stuff on the outer circle. So we're gonna look at some stuff on the inner circle first, uh, and then I'll take you on the outer rim of it. So as we pass the donut stand and the little snack stand next to it, we are gonna head straight over this bridge. And the first thing we are gonna run into is the Typhoon Lagoon Surf Pool. All right, so we are on the beach for the first time today, and we are heading towards Typhoon Lagoon, literally. We're, I mean, we're in it, but also literally. So here it is, the Typhoon Lagoon Wave Pool Surf Pool. Uh, this is a massive pool, as you can see, that has six foot waves and then some smaller bobs in between. This is North America's 
largest wave pool and strong waves can kind of occur at any time if you have smaller kiddos be aware of that there's always an announcement or a noise that will catch your attention to signal you that the waves are about to start so if you don't want to be in here when those big waves come you can get out but that's part of the fun of it right i don't know if you've seen our best day ever at typhoon lagoon but i was fine in here i was it was fine and normal and i loved it <laughs> frankly so i think this is great as we kind of head towards the right of the wave pool, so just to give you an idea, there is the wave pool Typhoon Tilly up there on the hill. That's the name of the boat. Um, and heading over here to the right, the first stand we are gonna hit is Surf Doggies. So this is where you're gonna be able to get some hot dogs, snacks, beverages. This one's pretty popular because it is right here on the sand, so you don't really have to go as far. Um, but there isn't a ton of options here. So here it is. You can get a foot-long all-beef hot dog here and an all-beef hot dog that is not a foot-long, a plant-based bratwurst, and a Mickey shaped pretzel over here. They do have some beers and some uh, smart waters and sodas, but that's about it. Right next to Surfing Doggies is going to be that full Joffrey stand that I mentioned. This is where you're gonna be able to find all of your favorite Joffrey staple, like those donuts, uh, shaken Jamaicans, frozen drinks, even the frozen sunset crush, which is something you can grab specifically here. Uh, it just has all your favorite, your Joffrey's favorites. So that is the Joffrey's right here, um, just to kind of give you an idea of where we're standing. And then directly across from the Joffrey's is going to be Village Landing. So this is a part of Castaway Creek. This is the lazy river that runs around the entire park and actually has multiple entrances that I will show you as we're walking around. And one of them is right here in front of the Joffrey stand. So the entrance of Castaway Creek is right here behind me, the Joffrey's in front of me. And then next to Joffrey's is actually gonna be Let's Go Slurpin. So Let's Go Slurpin is actually one of the adult beverage stands here. A lot of the adult beverage stands, one of the bars here in uh, Typhoon Lagoon, actually have very similar items. At this one, you can grab a uh, Grand Margarita, Rum Runner, Captain Mai Tais, Typhoon Tilly, Frozen Drinks, Strawberry Daiquiris. Lots of good staples here at this one. But they also have the mojito flight that I had and the regular mojitos, as well as the draft beer specials that we got in our best day ever video here, if you wanna check that out. So at this point, because it, again, it's kind of back and forth around through here, I'm gonna head back towards the entrance, towards merchandise, and we're gonna start on the outer rim of Typhoon Lagoon. I hope this is making sense. Makes sense to me. So here we are back at this bridge that we came across. We're gonna head back across it. So back right there in front of us is Singapore Sal's. Here to my left is actually going to be another adult beverage bar called High and Dry. So here at High and Dry, this is where I was able to grab my Mayday Mojito as well as that Mojito flight like I mentioned earlier. Uh, they do have the beer draft special here as well. You can even grab some different draft beers, bottle drinks, and fo frozen beverages over here at this bar. And there's even cell phone cases if you need them to get in the water. So heading back this way, we are passing the lockers again and we are going to turn left and head towards some of the other attractions and places to grab some bites this way. One thing I will say, um, during the hotter months, definitely the summers here, they keep the sprinklers on to keep the sidewalks wet so that way the sidewalks don't get too hot. But we definitely recommend maybe having some sandals or some swim shoes just because this concrete can burn your feet if it gets too hot, especially during the summer. So over here we have found some more beach, more beach chairs. This time I'm a little bit away from the wave pool. And we are gonna head to the right and the first thing we're gonna run into is Tropical Amity Outpost. So here at Tropical Amity Outpost, this is where you're gonna find some ice cold beverages, some snacks, things like the craft beers, hot dogs and even a chicken wrap or chicken lo mein salad which that chicken lo mein salad I might have to cop that today because that sounds amazing this place is open seasonally so uh, don't always bet on it being open and it also is not open the entire time the park is so if you're wanting to try out any of these items maybe consider coming a little bit before a park closes because it might not be open so walking past tropical Amity outpost we are gonna head over here to one of my favorite rides actually a little bit famously, I do not love water parks, but when Quincy and I were here for our best day ever, I rode Crush and Gusher, which is where we're headed now, and I actually loved it. It was one of my favorite, favorite rides we did the whole day, so I'm really excited to tell you about it. So here is the entrance for Crush and Gusher. This one is tons of fun. The storyline for this one is that you are going to enter an abandoned fruit processing plant, and you get to prepare yourself for a thrilling water coaster that goes down a 400 foot long tube slide. On this ride, you can choose between three different fruit shoots, as they call them, pineapple plunger, coconut crusher, or banana blaster. And you get to choose and just have a ton of fun with a partner or by yourself if you want to. This one was actually so much fun. And honestly, we were here on a colder day. We were here the day it opened this season and the water was warm. 
And you know what? Maybe that's why I like it so much, but I don't care because I needed the water to be warm that day. All right, so continuing around, there is Crush and Gusher, and we are gonna head down this path here to talk about another one of the raft rides uh, that you can find in Typhoon Lagoon. So next up on our list of attractions that we're gonna walk past, we are here at Miss Adventure Falls. This is a family raft attraction that is owned by Mary Oceaneer. She's a seafaring treasure hunter, and I right there a good little glimpse of Captain Mary um, whose hull was caught in a rogue typhoon hmm sounds a little familiar I don't know and it was scattered across this tropical paradise years ago this raft ride is actually really really cool there's an amazing animatronic in it sitting inside the hull of Captain Mary's boat it's a parrot and he talks to you as you're headed up other than that it wasn't our favorite you're, you're gonna get soaked on this one but if that's what you're here for, which most people are, it's tons of fun and definitely watch for that animatronic. So right here next to the entrance for Miss Adventure Falls, you're gonna find one of the private cabana areas. There are several of these areas scattered throughout the park. Um, all of these cabanas come with towels, cushion seating, a locker, refillable drink mugs, and ice water throughout the day. These do have a certain fee. We recommend grabbing some advanced reservations for these because they can fill up, especially during the summertime, because the seats are significantly comfier and there is guaranteed shade, which can be huge in the Orlando heat. So there are three different options for these private cabanas. One is the Beach Comer Shack Standard. This price is anywhere from $225 to $375. It has a maximum number of 10 guests and includes all of the things that I mentioned earlier, uh, including an attendant that will come grab some drinks and snacks for you. The next is the Beachcomber Shack Deluxe, which accommodates up to 12 people, all of the same things as we've already mentioned. It is $300 to $450 depending on the day. And then finally, the most expensive one you can grab is the Beachcomber Shack Premium Plus, which ranges anywhere from $375 to $500. Uh, it accommodates 10 people and it includes all of the things we've mentioned, but it also includes a dining table, mini refrigerator, flat screen TV, fans, and four electrical outlets so you can charge your things. So continuing past the private cabanas, I'm gonna show you what I think is the most important thing here that you're gonna to wanna to take note of, okay? So this right here that we are walking past is Typhoon Tilly's Snack Shack. And why is this important? Well, it's just the most iconic treat here in the entire park. You're gonna grab it here, but let's let's get into it. So here it is, this is the Snack Shack. This is where you're gonna find that iconic Dole Whip ice cream and nachos. This is where you're going to find the famous Hey Hey Cone, which Quincy and I did get to try uh, when we were here for our best day ever. Quincy had it and then I had the Moana Cone, which is new, uh, but I've never had a Hey Hey Cone. Maybe today's the day. So then directly to the left of the Snack Shack, you're actually going to find the Typhoon Tillies. This is a quick service where you're gonna find sandwiches, salads, tacos, and more. Quincy and I ate here on our best day, and I am gonna be honest, the fish tacos were to die for. She also got the shrimp Louis lettuce wraps, and oh my goodness, you guys. I don't wanna be dramatic, but I genuinely think this is some of the best tacos I've ever had in Disney World. I did not expect to find them here at a water park, so just take our word for it. So past Typhoon Tilly's, we are going to head to Hammerhead Fred's Dive. This is going to be, luckily for us adults, another bar that you can find here in Typhoon Lagoon. So right past this famous photo op of the shark uh, tea, shark jaw I should say, is gonna be that Hammerhead Fred bar. This one is open seasonally. It's open during the busier times of year. So don't guarantee that it's gonna be open, but luckily this one has almost all the same drinks as the last two bars. There's not gonna be much variation here, but they do have the Fred's Purple Siren, which that sounds amazing. Vodka, raspberry puree, dessert, pear, and pineapple juice. Ooh, I think I might grab it. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I just wanted to try it. It's also very hot today. And you guys know me, I'm sweating. Makes me want to do a jig. So it's nice and light and cold and really refreshing. What I really like about it in particular though is that pear flavor is actually really strong, but it mixes so well with the raspberry. It's just good, it's good and sweet, but you know, there's the kind of sweet that makes your teeth feel gross. You know what I mean? I just don't like that. So walking past Hammer for Head Fred's, you are gonna see this fun little area right here. It's a beach. Um, fun fact, this used to be a shark wading pool where you could like come pet baby sharks, but obviously it's not that anymore. So we're gonna cut through the sand and go talk about my personal mortal enemies. Let's get it. So here we are. This is the entrance to Storm Slides. This is a trio of three different body slides with a major drop at the end. This one takes you about three stories up and then about three stories down. And if kiddos are interested in learning about body slides or trying one for the first time, we think this is a pretty safe one to try for your first body slide. However, right next to those slides is my greatest mortal enemy, uh, the 
Huma Unga Kawabunga. Let's get into this. Here is Huma Unga Kawabunga. This is another really tall body slide. This one is actually a five story plunge straight down. And I have personally been on it despite my fear of body slides and heights. This particular five story plunge actually takes you down May Day Mountain. And if you're interested in this one, but you're a little bit nervous about it, we actually recommend trying out storm slides first. On this one, you're gonna need to make sure all glasses and loose jewelry are removed and you should be a strong swimmer just in case. I mean, you're not really swimming, but you never know. So right here is also the mountain trail entrance where you can walk around some really beautiful trails that surround Mount May Day and it just makes for a nice little stroll. So let's check it out. Also just to note, another entrance for the Lazy River is right across from Typhoon Tilly's. So here's one of those really pretty trails. It's just, I don't know, it's a nice vantage point of Typhoon Lagoon. You can really see out over everything. Let's head back so we can look at the rest of the park. Before I head back down though, I did come up here to see Typhoon Tilly, the shipwreck up here at the top of the mountain. And this is actually the top of the overlook too. So if you're curious, that's pretty much the whole park. Right there. So we walked back down to the entrance of the body slides. Right here is the body slides. And then to the left over here is another entrance for the Lazy River. It's North Shore Landing. And there are six throughout the park. So if you want to get in it, just you probably walk a few feet and you're at one. All right, so continuing around, we are actually getting pretty close. There you can see Typhoon Tilly. She's kind of like my personal North Star. I always know where I am based on Typhoon Tilly. We're gonna walk down this lovely little path past the Lazy River and underneath this kind of mountain, the cave, I should say. All right, so here we are. We're gonna head into these love the caves. I was really hoping it would have like a Tom Sawyer vibe, uh, but no, just a walk through. But it's nice and cool, so take what you can get, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So once you come out on the other side of this, you're actually going to find one of the most iconic photo spots here in Typhoon Lagoon, and that's this awesome hidden Mickey. I'm kidding, it's obviously not hidden, but it's just a cute little photo spot for you and your family. And then right past the photo spot, you're gonna find Gangplank Falls. So here at the entrance to Gangplank Falls, this is where you're going to be swept away by rushing rapids in a multi-person tube. <laughs> Quincy and I, for some reason, had the time of our lives on this one, um, and it absolutely soaks you. There's no way you're getting off this thing, even semi-dry, just so you know. So then right next to Gangplank Falls, you're gonna find Low Tide Louis. This is another one of those kind of quick service stands where you can walk up and grab the shrimp louis lettuce wraps here. There's the cauliflower uh, salad. There's also the chicken lo mein salad, churros, Mickey pretzels, all the jazz. And this one is kind of nice because it is towards the back of the park. So if you're not looking to walk all the way to the other side for something like Typhoon Tilly's, you can grab some good snacks here. So then walking past Low Tide Lou's, we are going to come over here to our right. And this is where we're actually gonna find a handful of things. Catch a Kitty Creek, Mayday Falls, and Keyhole Falls. All right, so over this bridge here is going to be a few things Kind of in the same area, which is really nice for us. So here, more views of that lovely Lazy River. Um, and then we're gonna find two attractions, one of which is actually closed today. All right, so here's the entrance to Mayday Falls. This is where you're going to brave the rapids and bumps on the park's highest and longest single rider tube. This one was not my favorite. It is pretty bumpy. When they say you're brave in the rapids, you're brave in the rapids. But then right next to it, you're gonna find Keyhole Falls. This one was an Emma Quincy favorite. Keyhaw Falls takes a scenic and swift ride down Mayday Mountain. It's nice, it's relaxing. We loved this ride and it, it's what I wanted it to be. Nice and relaxing. One thing about me, if you don't know this about me, I'm a book reader, I'm a beach sitter, I'm a drink sipper. I want to have the laziest, most relaxing day anywhere I go. Those are my personal best days, but that's not everybody's best day. But if you are like that, and I just described you, then you're gonna like Keyhole Falls. Right next to these lovely single rider rides, you're gonna find Catch a Kitty Creek. Catch a Kitty Creek, this is the main kids area of the park. This is where kids can come find some little slides, they can find some mini waves, mini ride, uh, mini raft rides, and even just some fun jets to like shoot each other with, because that's what kids love to do, is like spray each other with water. There's even a little kids mini raft ride through here. <laughs> it's so 
cute. This is my speed, you guys. This is for me. Okay, so I'm heading back across this bridge that we entered this fun area with, and I'm gonna head towards the right. We're actually getting pretty close. The thing about these parks is they're not as big, especially compared to Disney World parks, which I personally like, especially if you're coming for more relaxing reasons. So walking past Ketchikuti Creek, right here you are going to find another lovely entrance to the Lazy River. This one is South Shore Landing. So right here is the entrance to South Shore Landing. Straight across from that is where you're going to find Blustery Bay. This is kind of a pint-sized body slide for little kiddos. This area experiences some mini waves, uh, just in case the big wave pool might be too strong for your kiddos. And it's just like a fun little, more chill area for smaller kids. So walking past there, here's just another entrance to Ketchikitty Creek because it is pretty popular. There's multiple ways to get back over there. And then we are going to continue our walk. One thing I do like about Typhoon Lagoon is there is tons of seating throughout the entire park. So you're never going to worry about catching a seat. It might not be exactly where you want it, which we have some tips for that, so stick around for that part. But there's going to be a seat somewhere, and you can't only really say that for Disney World. So here, there she is, our North Star, Typhoon Tilly. As you can see, we are getting close to heading back around the park. There's only a few more stops we're going to take before I share with you some of my personal favorite tips for Typhoon Lagoon. But our next stop, it's one that's gonna make you happy. I'll just say that. Okay, so we're gonna head across another wooden bridge, which I'm just gonna say this, these it's real wood. So if you're scared of splinters like I am, be scared, keep your shoes on. That's just my tip. That's not anyone else's experience or tip, but that's mine. The first thing you're gonna get to as you walk across that board is going to be Leaning Palm. So this is a quick service with burgers, pizza, and snacks. You actually can mobile order at this location if you're curious, and they do have a specialty Joffrey's drink. If you're like me and you love something a little special, I will say it smells amazing. Can't say I've personally eaten here because I stick to Typhoon Tilly's, but uh, it smells amazing. But that's not the only thing I'm here for. I'm gonna walk right past it, I'm gonna show you something else. So here it is, the thing that I think is gonna make you happy, and that's Happy Landings Ice Cream. <laughs> Love that joke for me. This is where you're going to find lots of different ice cream options, but this is home to the Sand Pale Ice Cream Sundae, which if you don't know, is kind of iconic around these parts. You also can grab the pineapple upside down cone, which, which is dull with pineapple with vanilla, caramel sauce, vanilla cake, caramelized pineapple, and cherry. And then just right past Happy Landings is another one of those entrances to uh, the Lazy River. And what I really love about this one is if you walk just a few feet back, while you're in the Lazy River, there's actually signs right over here that warn you it's about time to get out for ice cream, which I think is very cute. So this area kind of concludes all of the major points of Typhoon Lagoon here. I am not a water park fan, uh, that's not a secret, but I actually have tons of fun here. I really love it. My husband and I even talk about coming over here just, to, just to, on my days off to kill time. It's just really relaxed, especially compared to the Disney parks, and you don't need a reservation for the water park, so take that as you will. And while that might be everything here, I'm not done yet. This is all ears. Come on, we have to give you tips and tricks. So let's start. So my favorite way to share tips is um, over a nice lunch together. So if you wanna go grab your lunch, pause the video, come back and we can, we can chat. Uh, while you're grabbing your lunch, so I'll tell you about mine. So I got the chicken wrap. Um, I really wanted that chicken lo mein salad, but it was sold out. So chicken wrap instead. I'm very excited. It feels light and refreshing. I'm excited to try it. And then it does come with some of these chips. And I have this at several locations at the park. First things first, my main tip for a type of the food is going to be don't skip out on the food, okay? This food, I know people in the past, like I've always been told it's, it's okay, it's so-so, like I don't really like it that much. I have loved the food. Everything I've tried here I thought was so good and unique and just different and tasty. So don't skip out on the food. Speaking of food, I actually really like this. I will say I would much rather have the tacos again than this, but I, I really wanted that chicken lo mein salad. I would think I would prefer it over this, but this is actually really good. If you're looking for a healthier option while you're here, this is really light and refreshing. There's corn in it. There is tomatoes, lettuce, black beans, uh, some nice white rotisserie chicken, and some just cheddar cheese. I mean, honestly, on a hot day like today, this is really nice and refreshing. Another tip, tip number two, consider going during the winter. Yeah, you've probably never heard that about a water park, but it's Orlando, so it's gonna be warm, okay? 
Quincy and I came in March for the day that it reopened. And honestly, it was great. It was a little bit colder in the morning, really warmed up by the afternoon, and no one was here. We walked on to every single ride, didn't wait for food, didn't wait for ice cream. It was top tier. Tip number three, bring your own towels. So yes, you can rent towels here, and yes, you can purchase towels here, but you're gonna have to pay for both of those options, unless you're a Disney Resort guest, which is a hot tip. If you're a Disney Resort guest, the towel rentals are included in your Disney hotel stay. But if you're not, save yourself some cash, bring your own towels, unless you just really want a Disney towel, I wouldn't recommend it. Even though it's not crazy expensive, I wanna say it's like $2 per day um, per towel, bring your own. Do not underestimate the wave pool, okay? A lot of people, you see it on videos and it like doesn't look that tall, you watch it, whatever, it, it looks fine. When you're in those waves, six feet when you're treading water can feel really tall, okay? If your kiddos are not strong swimmers, or maybe you're not a strong swimmer, just take that into consideration. Next tip, don't bring your own clothes. Don't do it. You're, you're not allowed to. So it's gonna be a waste of time and effort if you bring your own floats. Typhoon Lagoon does not allow you to bring your own floats from outside, so we highly recommend just enjoying the floats that they let you use in the, in the lazy river. Because then you don't have to put effort in and bring your own float. Finally, consider renting a locker, okay? I don't necessarily push for spending more money unless it's on food. But during the busier summertime, you know, there's going to be a lot of people. It's going to be really crowded. Traditionally, I'm pretty comfortable leaving my stuff on my chair. I don't really worry about it as much. But if that's something that's going to worry you, get a locker. It's $10 to $15 a day, $15 for the larger lockers and $10 for the smaller ones. If $15 is going to give you peace of mind, spend the $15. Alrighty, friends, that's it for lunch and for our full tour of Typhoon Lagoon. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now you can go check out our best day ever here at Typhoon Lagoon with me and Quincy. I'll see you there.